Hey there, everybody. It's June, and you know what that means on the Bad Anime Podcast. Uh, t- titties, basically. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about a different harem anime every single week this month. It's harem month. If you don't know what a harem anime is, it's when there's kind of a dude and he's surrounded by um, a bunch of a bunch of waifus, essentially. So that it's, it's going to be really silly. It, it damaged me a lot mentally this month, but I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for clicking on the show. Let us know what you think. And happy four weeks of harem month. It's bad. Anime. Hey everybody, I'm John. And I am Rob. And this is Bad Anime, the show where we decide, is, is this, this anime, anime bad? bad? And today, um, we are diving into uh, another harem anime. That we are. Uh, this one, we actually had the pleasure of watching with not just us, but all of our friends at the same damn time. Yes, we mentioned this in the February uh, monthly episode. Um, our little uh, friend holiday, Best Girl Day, we watch a harem anime in one sitting. And then we make a tier list of the girls. Yes. And we're not allowed to leave until we make a tier list. Exactly. One of our friends did leave because he was so wildly uncomfortable, but we didn't stop him. We're like, oh. And also, we recorded beforehand. And, you know, we like to have a couple drinks while we record. Yeah. As we're doing right now, the buzz is hitting me. We just did a shot of soju, and that stuff does things to me. It Boy, does it. So, by the end, we were hammered when we finished today's topic, Mother of the Goddess Dormitory. And I should cl- cl- I should clarify this is actually my second time watching it because I watched this as it aired. Well, oh. it, well, here's the thing: it aired a little late, and you know the summer season was pretty much over. But the show had a couple episodes left, mm-hmm. so I watched like the first half of it or so in one sitting, and then watched it every week afterwards. Um, I knew right away this would be a great choice for Best Girl Day. Um, however, I I made one misstep. Oh, in, in, in that um. Our first best girl day, which is the previous year. Yes, we did Infinite Stratus. Mm-hmm. Going going from Infinite Stratus to this was a, a big leap. It uh, was ooh in in a lot of ways. Um, I I think we everybody will will soon know why, but I yes. think it is it it is there was a lot going on in this one. A lot it, of tits. A, <laughs> the I mean to we, put it lightly. I mean yes, we have to yes. address address what this show is. The first literally the first shot of this show is a pair of tits. Yes. It is a zoom the, up, a zoom up on a pair of Bahanki Mommy Dinamities. It is exactly the first thing you see in the show, and it really sets the tone for the entire show. Yes, for twelve episodes of the first ten. season, ten. It was only ten. Yes. Wow, it felt like twelve. <laughs> but this is a this was a high dive, John. Right? This, this is a high dive one. High dive. Uh-huh. Is the, like I mentioned before, high dive. They're known for either the retro stuff for the retro mm. heads like me. Or perverted stuff for the perverts like me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I I have high dive since I fall into both categories. And this was one of their exclusives that aired in summer of 2021. And I think just to be completely transparent today, to use my business vernacular, uh, because t- I was kind of struggling with what exactly happened in this show before we sat down to record. And let me tell you, uh, I feel very, very fine about that now ah! because I uh, I went on the Wikipedia page for the show yeah. uh, as I have it open right now. There you go. Um, and I scrolled down to the plot because I was like, I genuinely don't really remember exactly what happened. I remember a lot of the characters, what they looked like. Yeah. I remember like boobies, but I don't really remember like what happened. And the plot, uh, I've never seen this, mind you, on a Wikipedia page. Uh, the plot for this show on the Wikipedia page is two sentences. So, <laughs> oh, wow. So that that made me feel a whole lot better for not remembering what the plot of this show even is. Yes. But let me get into it. Uh Koshi Nagumo is our main character. Koshi. Uh, he is a first-year middle school student, I'm reading this straight off, who yes. finds himself homeless, penniless, and without relatives to take care of him after a the house fire. Not a house fire, but the house fire. Yeah, I don't think people are taking too much time with the high school. Sorry, mother of the goddess dormitory. Um, yeah, we just did high school DXD. High school DXD? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so not taking too much care with this Wikipedia entry. Yes. As he lies on the street, he gets picked up to become the dorm mother of a dormitory full of troubled women's university students. And that's exactly what we get. Uh, it's probably the closest thing to slice of life that I've seen. Oh, yeah, definitely so. Because it's just like, oh, yeah, he's the dorm mother and he lives in this house with all of these um, boobily googly women. <laughs> and uh, they're just great googly moogly. <laughs> Great googly moogly, Batman. And he has to take care of all of them. Holy floppy titties, Batman. (laughs) And he's 12. Yes. 
which I think is the weirdest part of this show. Well, that's the that's the whole thing. That's why I chose it. I wanted to pick something a little more controversial. Yes. I this would have been great on a third or fourth or fifth best girl day. Going into number two, that's where I fucked up. Um, because it was such an extreme departure from the previous year. Anyway, so yes, to give a little more detail, our boy Koshi, there's a house fire. The only thing they missed in that plot uh, synopsis, which I thought is important, where his there's a house fire. It wasn't clear how it started, mm-hmm. but it was clear his dad ran off of the insurance money and just left him. Yes. So that was a big one. And um, so he's on the street just begging for money. He's starving. And next thing you know, our first waifu candidate ap- approaches him. It's Minoru. Minoru, yes. She was um, the scientist one. The green hair one, the right? The green hair one who yes. did a lot of experiments in the dormitory. <laughs> and they got more and more wildly ridiculous as shows go on. She's constantly blowing shit up. There's gases everywhere. <laughs> she also has like a – if I could jump for a second, just one second. Sure. She has like – they they check out her room at one point in the yes, show, I yes. remember. And they go in it. It just keeps going. There's like three secret doors in her room right. that lead to different laboratories and yeah. laboratories and laboratories. Right. And it's – crazy because this is a very small house yeah Um, exactly no this show isn't concerned with much of anything in terms of reality (laughs) got that right uh continue continue with your uh with your chat so what happens is minaru takes him in and it's like oh you're homeless we need a dorm mother and he's like dorm mother it's like yeah um we need someone to like clean up all our shit because we're like dirty university students and we don't feel like doing it we'll pay you and stuff and he's like cool yeah but at first, you know, then he meets the the other housemates. I'll go in some order. We have. Does he first know not to go with strangers at any point? He's starving and homeless, so he has no he has My no other God. option. I guess he got nothing to lose. I guess. So then we meet some other of the characters. Um, we meet Frey, who is the cosplay girl. She's a long mm. blonde hair, and she and her character is she makes cosplays. Got it. Good. That's all you need. <laughs> that is legitimately all you need. God. Then we have um. Who do I talk about next? We have a uh, uh, we have Kyria, which is mm-hmm. she is the um, she is a martial artist and oh yes, the red hair one, the right? red haired one with, yes. with who is the least busty, but she's the most fit. Mm-hmm. Um, she gets some fun character development. We'll talk about her later. Very fit. There's Serene, the white haired one, who's like kind of ethereal. Oh, she's Moon Girl. Yes. Yes, she always like talks about the moon. There, there's like something semblance that she's like a spirit from the moon or something. Yeah, she has moon magic at some point in the series. Yeah, and, and um. She's the only one with magic in the series. It's, it, very it's set in our normal world. Interesting. But one of the other, but the, the last housemate, there's another girl after this, but there's a housemate, Atena. Atena, The pink-haired yes. one. She has the thing. She hates men. Or she's morally completely petrified of men. Yeah, she's very scared of them. There were a bunch of, like, scenes in the show where, like, she has She to... would, like, run into a guy and then yes. her nose would, like, pour out fountains of blood. Yes. So much so that she would faint and then she couldn't continue with responsibilities for, for that day. Yeah, she's a nose bleeder. Yes, She, she totally explodes nose. from the nose. All the time. Bleeds out um, anytime any boy or man talks to her. Yes, and then, like, so she comes around because um, our boy Koshi says, okay, I'll leave. She doesn't want me here. And then she's like, I can't do that and leave him homeless. But then she, so... That's part of the thing. It's like, oh, she hates men, but she's letting this boy into the house. Who knew? It's funny because Atana is the only character name I remembered from this show because until all, today. All Koshi screams is Atana throughout the entire fucking thing. It's funny because that's not even the reason. Really? Because Atana, I, I only remembered her name because she gets so many nosebleeds. Yeah. And her name kind of sounds like my insurance provider, Etna. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, I was like, oh, she's like very medically in in in, in yeah. turmoil. So she really got, got to get these claims. And <laughs> And I was like, oh, Etna, and it's Atena. So that's how I remember her name. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I have nothing else to say that. That's just genuinely funny. But um, everybody else, nope. Everybody else, no, no, no. No, no, no. So basically the status quo for the first couple episodes is uh-huh. set where we get we get more insights on the girls and the right. you know the personality show. Um again, Koshi tries to help Atena overcome her fear of men, like so he'll go to the grocery store with her. Oh god. She'll, she'll have like a mask on. She's she's super afraid of men. Um Minaru is just gonna like test a bunch of weird scientific shit on him because you know she's a weirdo she also has a habit of of wearing a lab coat with just one like it just panties on underneath it nothing else under the lab coat. yeah they all have a habit of just wearing underwear a lot except for atana she, she actually one of her one of her habits she has like these two little um sticks with like um little stickers on them at the end mm-hmm. so she tries to keeps covering nip oh yeah she doesn't 
Because like, whose face is on the? Like is a it baby. Her? It's a baby face. And yeah. she like she says something in Japanese every time and like yeah. covers so, like their nipples. Something Fuki Yeah, Fuki yeah. yeah. And like covers like their nipples and yes, like yes. vaginas she and stuff want, like that. She doesn't want to like corrupt young Koshi. That part was pretty funny because she acts as the actual censor for the show. Exactly. Like, literally the censor. Like, the fact that they we wave the censor into the narrative is really Which good. is pretty funny. Yeah. Yes. And then we have, um, like I said, we have Frey. She's a cosplay. Um, mm-hmm. She's a cosplay um, creator. So she has a habit of dressing our boy Koshi in a lot of interesting cosplays. So not only they're trying to hit all the female fetishes, they're trying to hit like boy fetishes too because yes. they dress him up like a cat boy. <laughs> they dress him up as a girl. There's a lot of fetishes. They, right. They fetishize the kid a lot. Oh yeah, they send him to like the all girls school dressed up as a girl in one episode. Yeah, because um because a Kyria and Atsuna forgot their lunches, so he has to um. We're not even gonna go chronologically. We're just talking about the highlights. No, because, fuck it. Because uh, you, you really can't go chronolo- chronologically. But there's no point because they're just like snippets and it's and a, right. and a slice of life. There's no point going chronologically because they don't have too much impact on each other. Yeah, it's really the. I think the only points we gotta hit are the first and last thing that happened, and we already hit the first thing. So hey. But anyway, so yes, at one point they forget their lunches, and then Frey dresses him up like a girl so he can get into the all girls school- college, even though he's clearly a twelve year old. Classic. Which is it gets really weird because a lot of the girls get kind of gropey with like, "Oh, you're so cute." They start groping who they think is a young girl, and he and and he's like, "What are you doing?" Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like even if I was a girl, this would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> like- well, the whole show is weird. Uh, we should talk about Kyria too. She is a martial artist. Yes. And yes. The one with the red hair, right? One with the yes. red hair. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she's a habit of, she. <laughs> She's very shy when it comes to romance. So mm-hmm. when she's a habit of like reading shoujo romantic manga and punching hose holes through walls. That's right. She does look like like the shoujo manga, and yeah. she was every episode. She's like, "Oh, but do you want me to read my shoujo manga to you or something like that?" It was it was very funny. There was a great early episode when she accidentally kicks a hole through her ceiling and falls through the ceiling into Koshi's room. And says, "Sorry, Koshi, I'm sleeping with you tonight." Just that immediately had like she yeah. felt it was a giant hole. And she yes. fell through on his bed, and she was like, that's it. Yeah, exactly. I'm laying and, here. And I'm sitting next like, to you. Oh, no. And then Serenay, our moon mage, moon fix, fixes girl. it with moon magic. And at one point, she makes out with Koshi when he's sleeping. And, like, she's the only one who kisses him in the series. And nobody addresses any of that. No. no. It's never discussed. She repairs wood floors. She, uh, the, they wake up the next day and go, wow, it's fixed. And that's it. That's all oh the explanation we get. God. Yeah, so she's just some type of moon mage. She was probably, uh, I would say, out of all of like the characters, she was probably the funniest. Yes. Because I, she was constantly like, I, I think like there was always like talk, of, like everyone was like talking about some frivolous thing, like oh, like no, I should have Koshi for the day because yeah. he needs to work on my experiment. And then, and then she would just be like, the moon calls for who it may, but Koshi. Is not today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very like, what is she talking and about? She keep eating like moon crackers. Yeah. And like, she didn't want to go outside, but then they gave her an umbrella that has like a picked painting of the moon in it. And so she felt cool going outside. <laughs> she really struck me as that character from the la- from Avatar The Last Airbender. Yes. Who Sokka dated. Who yes. Was, yeah, uh, yeah. The moon. Yeah. When, Sokka, when Sokka's girlfriend became the moon. <laughs> My girlfriend became the moon. Yeah. Uh, That's rough, brother. <laughs> That's rough. That's rough. <laughs> Oh, Sokka and Zuko just throwing out. Oh, yeah. So good. Great episode. Great series, by the way. Fucking love that show. But, uh, yes, and then we, um, and then finally we meet our sixth and final waifu candidate. There's only, right. re- there's only really seven characters in the show. Yeah. Six girls and Koshi. There's a couple side characters, but none reoccurring. Mm-hmm. It's just someone to grope Koshi or just like, or a bunch of girls who get really horny because fucking Minoru drops like a pheromone thing. Yeah. So the entire girls dormitory starts oh. blessing out. That's right. Oh my god! And th- was that the one where they footsied under the big uh, under the table? Different episode. Man, uh, I can't believe there's just been so many of these. But th- th- that there was that one episode, yeah, where they were all gathered around this like warm oh, kota- table. Kotatsu. Yeah. Kotatsu. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, basically it's a heated Japanese table. You all, yes. you all you squat under with your family. And they were and, all and playing at one footsies. Point, at one point, foot- footsies were happening, but I think people keep, kept accidentally kicking each other's clitorises, <laughs> and so there was some rough orgasms happening. <sighs> Yes, that, that was a that was a plot point. I can't believe that was a twenty minute episode of a show. Yes, it was. It was that, just a bunch of weird orgasms. Oh my! It was just weird orgasms. And it, it got it got really episode. weird because we meet the sixth girl. Yes, and it's Steya, mm-hmm. Koshi's friend, who's his own age, mm-hmm. so she's twelve. And because we see her boobs quite a bit, at one point, yes. at one point, she gets outright molested by Frey, the cosplay girl, which is wild. She which, tries to she, she tries to strip her and put cosplay stuff on her, and that happens oh god 
You look yeah, you look a little tired. That was d- d- just I I just forgot the reminder that she's legitimately twelve in this show and she is a candidate for a waifu. It's crazy. To and me. the fact that the, the fact that she's nude a few times is a little oh, also a little God. distracting. So yeah, Steya's role is eventually she never becomes a housemate, but she checks up on Koshi frequently. Mm-hmm. And the thing about this show is it, it makes you not really like Steya that much because she's like. Always the one that's being like, Bitchy. "Why are you girls like trying to do to Koshi?" And, like, and they're all like, "We're not trying to do anything to Koshi." While well, they're it, groping it, him. <laughs> well, uh, Atena's like, Atena realizes she has feelings for Koshi. You know, it's, that's that's great. Yeah, Kyria, fantastic. Kyria has a weird complex with Koshi because mm. um, Koshi reminds um, Kyria a lot of her younger brothers, and so she has a like a, a sisterly uh, protective instinct over Koshi. Mm-hmm. But then she's real. She realizes more and more she doesn't know how she wants Koshi to view her. That's right. So, because she starts to develop feelings too, because you know she has, I, she has kind of some complexes about being seen as a girl. Mm. She's always the tough, you know, tough kick-ass one. It's a very common um, romantic device yeah. in anime. In yeah. So I, I didn't even blink. I'm like, oh yeah, he's 12. So you know, at one point they almost kiss and they get caught by I forget who catches them. But oh, yeah. But I, that was the only point in the dub that got me when the voice actor for Kira going, I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. I gotta give the, the dub actors all credit here. They tried. Unfortunately, the script just wasn't very interesting. I yeah. think because it was a simul dub, so I think they just tried to rush it out. They, yeah, they, they did their job. I don't want to. I don't want to discredit anyone who worked on the show because the directing was great. Everything was spot on. The writers unfortunately had a job to do. Right, they did have a job to do, and it, it was just like straight. You can tell it was like very one to one. Yes, yeah, like one, here right it is. There. Yeah, just right there. So. Get it done. Get it out there. Get and it done. Get it quick. I mean, it made sense, and uh, I don't know for. Uh, well, let's wrap it up for a second for the plot. Um, how it wraps up, I actually just read the last episode synopsis because I just don't remember what happened in the last oh, yeah, episode. Oh, yeah, he got a cold. He got very sick. Yeah, yeah he yeah. just got a cold. And yeah, he yeah. had a nightmare about his house burning down, which they didn't really bring up that often until the end. No. And I was like, oh, I forgot. yeah, his house did burn down and his dad did leave him with all the insurance money. So, I mean, that's, that's a whole thing that we could be discussing. Dick, move. Yeah, this whole trauma that he's had. Yeah. Um, no, they, they all get sick and they all, and they all compete to fawn over him. Yes. You know, at one point, of course, Frey, the cosplay one, dressed up as, as a nurse, and she's all sexy about it. Um, Mineru wants to give him, like, a concoction that'll make him feel better. Atana, I think, just cooks him something, you know, because she's sensible. Curia, I forget what Curia does. And Saturday is like, I will use moon magic or whatever, you know, and Steya just gets angry and blames everyone else. Which is classic Steya. Classic <laughs> Steya. Get an angry blaming everybody but yourself. Yep. You wrong, wrong person. You wrong, How wrong dare person. dare you? Oh my! Least God. favorite character. I mean, it, it's it's hitting us me right now because in terms of the plot, there's really not much to talk about. There's really not much in the plot. Um, but and like in the last episode, right? He's sick, but they're also planning for like a New Year's party. Yes, yes. And they're like, oh, it's New Year's. We gotta cook things and have fun. Yeah. And then he's basically sick until he's not. Yeah. And then he's not, and then goes shopping for New Year's. And Atana makes him these gloves. Yes. Uh, so he can stay warm, yeah. So he can stay warm. So he 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 buys things for their New Year's dinner, and uh, then he makes the New Year's dinner, and uh, then they eat the New Year's dinner, and that's the um, show. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish I was exaggerating, but I'm not. No, we're we're hitting all the points here. There's we're- really not much here. It's just. Every episode, it was 10 episodes, so a bit shorter than a normal se- season yes, is, yes. E- even. Uh, but even then, it was just like... A lot of titty. A lot of boobage. A lot of a lot of Koshi falling into crotches and titties. Yes. So yes. I, can, I can speak to something very interesting here. Yes. I'll watch it twice. Go right ahead. Like I said, watching this week to week was a very different experience than watching all at once. Mm. Because... Okay. When, when I first watched it, the jokes didn't feel too repetitive. They were like the same type of material, but didn't feel too graining. Right. Watching it all in one sitting was different. Watching yeah. it in one sitting was kind of a marathon. Luckily, it was easy because we were all fucking hammered. Yeah, we were all hammered. And also, there's like we at were least chugging 12 Bud Light next. dudes in a room yeah. chugging Bud Light next, brother. <laughs> uh, chugging some Bud Did Light. You just next. go near. Uh, chugging some uh, Bud Light next. Yep. And, wa- and we were obviously just like laughing the whole time, making yeah. jokes, like yeah, being yeah. silly. So it was very easy to watch in that context. But when you do boil it down, I, I do know what you're saying because every episode, I was like, all right, whose pair of titties is Koshi going to run into next accidentally? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was just the same exact device used in every episode more yeah, so. Yeah. That was that. I mean, yeah. that's that's what this show is. It's, 
the more it's funny. I had a very I had no idea what I was going to say about the show coming into this episode. Neither did I. I Neither I really did I. Did not. Um. Wow. I'm it's, sorry. It's hitting me like a tidal wave because i'm realizing my opinion on the show might have drastically changed really yes oh even even during the show right now yes wow during, during this episode i'm realizing very interesting well because i'm dogging the show so much and i'm like wait a minute how do i feel about the show hmm. i feel like kirio when she's wondering how she feels about koshi so let me get to the opinions then okay let me get to that then rob um, was this anime bad Honestly, now that I'm sitting here, I gotta say, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I did not expect that at all, honestly, from you. No, because it's narrowly bad. Narrowly bad. Okay. It's just like just by a hair, just well, by well, a just by a nipple. God, no, I'm struggling with this one. I'm struggling by a nipski. Honestly, it's one way or the other. Mm, um, I'm not sure. Wow. Why, because it's so it's so on the wire for me. Let me explain. Yeah. It looks good. The show is well animated. Yes, it is. A, is very well anima- animated. It is. It is a very good looking show. It looks great. The characters are. They don't really have time to flesh any of them out. Koshi is just so one note. He's a child. Yeah. And you know. Wow. No, I'm gonna by a by a razor thin. I'm gonna have to call it bad. Ooh. By razor thin mm-hmm. because the show looks very good. I feel bad insulting people involved with it because it's a very good looking show. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Because I'm, I'm realizing right now, it's all the same shit for 10 episodes. Yeah. It really doesn't yep. change. Mm-hmm. If you Honestly, if you watch the first episode, you got the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Except Kyria and Atena get more of the hots for Koshi. That's the only thing that changes. Yes. It's really such a one-note gag of a series. So I got to call it bad only because it's mm. very repetitive. I have to go update yes. my mouth. Because I really enjoyed this when I first saw it. Mm. But now I'm thinking about it again. I, I can't call this good. It's, yeah. it's, just, it's just too – it's almost a waste of time. It's mm-hmm. – I enjoyed the fuck out of it because we watched it together. Yeah, right. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yes, but honestly – I agree. Anything is going to be fun if you watch it with, like, all your bro- – all, all your, your buds, boys right? and, and you have more bud, enough Bud Light Next to kill a horse. <laughs> bud Light Next. That's what we had. <laughs> and So, yeah, just by, like, a – just by the length – by the thickness of a razor, I got to call this bad. I really mm-hmm. do. And wow. I didn't realize that until – I sat down to talk talk over with you because I I heard the anger in my voice and just like oh the fucking this happened I'm like yeah wow maybe I didn't like it as much as I no, thought no no I, yeah. I realized it now mm-hmm. and I think I get I think I gave it a pretty high score when I first scored it. I got to go back and really update, update my mouth interesting maybe like I feel like possibly the second watch for you did a lot of that as you said yes, with definitely. like the with like the oh binging it is very different from weekly watch. yeah no so that's honestly if I if I only watch a show once I might have a different opinion. Mm. But for right now, I I actually have to call it bad. But looking at it as a continuous piece, yes, yeah. I, I understand how you got that to that actually. Because the slice of life really depends on the characters being charming and interesting. Mm-hmm. All of them are just charming enough, but yeah. they weren't super engaging. Because Mi- yeah. Mine- Mineru, the scientist, mm. Frey, the cosplay girl, and Serene, the um moon girl, the moon girl just weren't interesting. You're right. They were and, all and very. Stay like, was just annoying. Two dimensional, but yeah. like. Well, obviously they're two dimensional because they're cartoon characters. But um, yeah. but but very two dimensional character wise, and I think, kind of on 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 my opinion, I I think uh the only character that I thought actually had any redeeming qualities and was like fun to like yeah. watch their progression was uh Kyria, yeah, yeah. who is the uh, redheaded uh, the, the one we all girl. liked. Yeah, he, she was our favorite by a big margin. Everybody's favorite. When we made the tier list, she was S, and I don't remember the rest. Yes, it was. She was an S. Uh, we t- Moon Girl was one below yeah. because we just thought she was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everybody else had a big stink over like Minoru, and I was like, Minoru's just like a whatever. She's yeah, like that she's sciencey nothing. character. She doesn't do anything. She's just like nothing. she's just like attractive and stuff. Yes, and, exactly. Like, that's not. But some guys found her really attractive. Yes. So they pushed for that. So I mean, I think that was our argument towards the end on like, all right, who are who? Like, what does the tier list look like? But before we get to that, even like to g- give just my straight opinion on this, um. Every episode was essentially exactly the same. There were different surroundings. Yes. There were different like scenarios. Scenario, exactly. But the events were all the same. But the events were but the like, same. So now it was at the school or yes. at the home or right. at the supermarket at the karaoke. The humor did not change. No. Everything that happened in the first two episodes happened again in every other episode following. Yeah. Besides his house burning down. Yeah. Lol. Um. <laughs> but <laughs> lol skis. <laughs> but e- either way, it, it was just. 
so just repetitive, the same thing. I, I honestly had a good time watching it because it was surrounded by everybody. Right. And like I had everybody on me. Um, but can I call it bad? Can I say that this anime was bad and it, it okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. It sucked. It wasn't bad. Oh, the worst part is I immediately thought fair. Th- thank you. It, it yeah. just, it just, for me, it sucked as in like, it's not something I would recommend to anybody, but for those that do like a harem anime, yeah. for those that do like exactly just like very like scenario situational, it's like yeah. a sitcom essentially. Oh, yeah, that's exactly the sitcom. For those who do like that with the same kind of humor uh, echoed throughout, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. This did it for you. Yeah. Um, this did it. Uh, it looked great. But there, I mean, just, there could have been more variety. There in the could jokes. have been a lot more variety in the jokes. The humor was not on par, not nearly on par with like a high school DXD. Yeah, or or so many other slice of life, for example. Right, like I've it, seen. it wasn't funny in of itself. Like after halfway, but we made it funny. We well, uh, after as, halfway. Uh, as a group, we made it enjoyable. Yes, we made it a good time to watch. Um, but so I think I don't. I wouldn't consider it bad per se because yeah. it, it did fill out a thing and it it did lose my attention towards the end but it largely was able to kind of introduce different things and kind of get me on the up and up and kind of re gotcha. like refocus yeah. me on it gotcha um so I, I i'll say it's not bad uh it does suck it's <laughs> not very it's not very original no um not very well put together the characters are mostly just whatever one note one note uh but i will say it, it wasn't vehemently terrible and I think that's what, to me, okay. at least on my barometer, makes something like bad. As in, like, I just can't fucking watch this. Yeah, like, gotcha. a- Angel Sanctuary, I just couldn't fucking watch that. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> this, I can deal with Chivalry, it. Chivalry of a Failed Knight wanted to make, wanted to make me punch, punch right. my head in. Chivalry of a Failed Knight. Sig- I think Chivalry of a Failed Knight was worse than this. Oh, in totally. A, in a bunch of ways. Oh, totally. In a lot of ways. And like I ways. said, I, I'm only narrowly calling it bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just, I think, because I, I could see what they could have done to better yes which is it's a, maybe it's an unfair mark against the show but again by a razor hair i'm just calling it bad yeah yeah i, I, I there, completely there is, agree with that like i said there there is a lot of positive qualities here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's just I, I think my second viewing killed it for me i think we're on both sides of the razor here yeah, exactly. like narrowly bad and i'm like narrowly not bad well then what an interesting, that's okay what an interesting uh opinion we formed today yes what an interesting lovely opinion we have formed today about mother of the goddess dormitory so hey guys um if you want to form your own opinion, go watch it. Yeah, go watch the thing. Let us know if you have watched it. Uh, let us know in comments or send us a DM. Whatever you got to do to let it be known, send us an email. And uh, make your opinions known. Happy to kind of read them out. Uh, but, yeah, from what we're saying, uh, Rob is a, a bad, and I'm a not bad for this one. But it's very narrow. It, it's it's a Very narrow. And who knows? Our opinions may change over time. We'll see. They very much could. Uh, let, let's be. Um, eventually, we could change our opinions on a lot of things things and we will we will address Ooh. those but either way everybody thanks for watching thanks for listening and uh, we will catch you again real soon happy mothering everybody happy mothering it's bad wow oh my god what a rousing podcast of anime conversation am i right my compares am i right my weebdom anywho uh yeah you can send us a message if you want did you like this podcast did you hate this podcast do you want to kill me do you want to drench me in calaxasaur blood and watch me drink it that's fine just send us an email at badanimepod at gmail.com or dm us on our instagram at badanimepod all one word you can also find us on youtube as badanime and you can leave a comment on whatever video you want to leave a comment on we'll read them all anyways we don't care i love you kiss kiss in your ear podcast network